every year right after Thanksgiving and sometimes even before, I love baking a number of family heirloom recipes for the holidays, mostly German recipes that I'm so excited to share with you in this video. The first one is my Stollen recipe, Stollen, and it's actually S-T-O-L-L-E-N, and it is not like stolen, but it's Stollen, so I hope you don't mind my little German lesson here. <laughs> Anyways, I am adding flour to my bowl. This is a family recipe that I've been baking for years and years, and it's always so good and so much better than anything you can buy in the store. It is a yeast-based recipe. I actually will post the link for this recipe in the description box below this video because I have a blog post with the entire detailed recipe if you would like to make this as well. So adding the yeast to it and then sugar. I find that these holiday recipes often use ingredients that I guess some centuries ago people didn't have in everyday life, but had either reserved for the holidays or they were seasonally available and were specialties. Here I'm adding my homemade vanilla sugar and a lot of cinnamon. Cinnamon is just such a beautiful classic holiday flavor and scent. And looking at my recipe, making sure I have all the ingredients that I need. I'm adding some cardamom, which is another classic holiday spice. And I just eyeball it. I don't necessarily need to measure anything. And freshly grated nutmeg. I just love absolutely smelling those spices and they instantly evoke holiday feelings when I bake this recipe. I'm just stirring up the dry ingredients here. Then I'm adding some warm milk. That always helps the yeast get really active. I'm adding a couple of eggs right into the bowl. So really, when you think about it, a very simple recipe with a lot of ingredients, but none of these ingredients are actually really very fancy. I'm adding soft butter that I had softened before, and I just had to smell the dough, the spices, the holiday scents. It just, mm, sometimes I just need to do that. So mixing everything up and it's just, like I said, I could go to the store and buy store-bought commercial stolen, um, but I don't know. There's something very meditative for me about baking something and reconnecting to my family roots, to my heritage, and thinking about what it would have been like for my grandmother and my great-grandmother and previous generations to bake these holiday recipes. After I've mixed this up, I add a beeswax wrap to it and let this sit in a warm spot. For the next recipe, I am actually peeling my almonds here by adding them to a bowl and adding boiling water to it. This is actually a very fun activity. And after the almonds have been sitting for a while, I drain the hot water over my sink. And now you will see they're fairly easy to touch and they just pop right out of the skin. It's really fun. Something that kids will enjoy because um, they're very um, juicy and wet and they slip right out, pop right out of the skin. And it's like I said, it's a really fun activity. Once they're all peeled, I add them to my food processor because I really want them to be in chunks, not almond meal, but just chunks that I can taste and feel the consistency of in my stolen. It might have been better to let them sit a little bit and dry um, I could have dried them in a dehydrator or in a warm oven, but as I was recording this video, sometimes I'm not as prepared as I would like to be, and I 
process them when they were wet. Here I'm making my own powdered sugar because I find that for certain recipes, powdered sugar is better than granulated sugar and mine is fairly coarse granulated. Then I'm adding flour. Looking back at my recipe, this is my family's heirloom cookie recipe that goes several generations back. We don't obviously know exactly how far back, but it's a recipe that my mom handed me down from my grandmother and that she tells me how they were baking it when she was a kid in Germany. And every season they were baking so many batches that the kids actually, her brothers and sisters were all pretty tired of rolling and cutting out the cookie dough. So I think my grandmother had to finish it and they had a huge amount of cookies. So I'm only making one batch here again with my homemade vanilla sugar that is so versatile. And I'll also leave a link for the recipe in the description box if you'd like to find out how to make it. Adding an egg to the dough. And I like to use my hand beater. It is just a little bit more convenient here than using my big KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, it's a lot quicker in the cleanup and I often don't need the very big bowl of my KitchenAid Pro, as you can see in the background. And it's just a little bit more handy, I guess, handheld. And getting the dough all uniform. And then I'm gonna need to chill the dough in my refrigerator. It's better for rolling out. So here is my yeast dough for the stolen. Give it a little bit of a mix. And now I'm adding my chopped if you will, my almond chunks. And then I have some lemon peel, candied lemon peel that I had made earlier by boiling the lemon peel in water and then in sugar water and keeping it for a few weeks. And that's a very essential ingredient for my stolen recipe. And then I have rum soaked raisins, really simple. Um, a day or two before I made this, I added rum to raisins, let them sit for a couple of days or for a few days and directly add them to my dough here. I'm trying to keep the rum out because that's just going to make the dough a little bit too runny and too soft. And if you like, you can drink the rum. It's a very sweet rum because it's been, that's raisins soaking in it or if that's not your thing, you just toss it out. I'm gonna give that a good stir and get all the ingredients incorporated. And yeah, it looks funny how I'm holding my spoon really close to the bottom, but it actually gives me a better grip. And because this is a fairly dense dough, Next, I'm going to transfer it to a piece of parchment paper and shape it. It is said that this recipe stolen is actually centuries old and it resembles um, baby Jesus. And I'm going to talk about a little bit that, but later in the video. Um, and then I'm adding marzipan. I get that at World Market, sometimes called Cost Plus, very cheap and roll that because I want that marzipan roll to be as wide as my stolen so that all the stolen slices have marzipan in them when we slice them up and eat them. Obviously, if you're not a fan of marzipan, you can always leave that out. That's just one of the many variations you can bake. Now I'm folding over the stolen dough so that the marzipan is completely hidden and tuck in the raisins because I find that if the raisins, too many raisins on the outside, often get really black during the baking. So I like to take the ones that are almost about to fall out and either tuck them under or tuck them into the dough. And I will set this on a baking sheet. 
or casserole in this case, and let the dough rise again. That's a yeast dough, so it won't take very long. Giving it a little bit of tuck here and there, and then I'm gonna let that sit in another warm spot. And my third recipe that I'm making today is vanilla crescent cookies. My husband's absolute favorite. Well, I don't really know anybody who doesn't like this recipe. And I will leave a link in the description box for this recipe. Mixing butter, blending it until it's very soft and creamy, adding sugar to it. That's just one of those various techniques that ensures a really good dough when you actually blend and mix the sugar with the really creamy butter until everything is incorporated and there's a whole science behind it that I'm not exactly sure I can recite here but I know that that is actually a thing. And here again is my vanilla sugar. As you can see, I need it a lot during the holiday baking and I always make it in the fall. So I have a lot of it really for holiday baking. Now we need egg white and I'm separating the egg, separating the egg yolk from the egg white. And there's always something I can do with the egg yolk and if not, I'll just feed it to our dog. Another quick mix here. It does need a little bit of flour, not a whole lot. It's actually a very crumbly, um, nutty, and I'm trying to think of the word, there's a really good word in German for the consistency of these vanilla crescent cookies. And then I'm just using store-bought almond meal. You can use the almond meal that has the skin of the almonds or the um, blanched almonds. I'm using the blanched almonds because it just makes the vanilla crescents look a little nicer because they're white and dreamy looking. You can always use the whole almond meal if that's all you have. A little saran wrap here on my kitchen counter. And I'm transferring the dough right onto the plastic wrap. This is another dough that needs to chill in the refrigerator for about an hour or so. You can always do it longer, but it actually helps the cutting and the shaping, which you will see a little bit later in this video. And I wrap it in this long roll. In a moment, you will see why this makes sense. And trying to press it into a long rope, not even a log, but a rope. And I'm gonna make it thinner than that. And I can just squeeze it out to the sides because the plastic wrap will stick together. So I can just squeeze it out to the sides here with my hands. Trying to make it as even as I can. in the refrigerator. It's not easy to find space in our refrigerator. There's always so much going on. I'll take my cookie dough out because that is ready to be rolled out. Unwrap that from the plastic wrap. If I can find where the opening is. And I've talked in previous videos about how I don't have fingernails because I just, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how other people do it with long fingernails. I can't stand having long fingernails with all the things that I do. That's the only downside when you try to open something and you don't have any fingernails to do it with. I like cutting my cookie dough in half and chilling the other half so it doesn't get too warm because then otherwise the cookies will spread out a lot more than if they're pretty chilly. 
Now I'm spreading flour on my work surface and my wooden rolling pin and roll out the dough into a nice sheet here. I have various Christmas themed cookie cutters. The ones that I find really easy, there's some that are super fancy, but it's really challenging to actually cut out the cookies and the stars are really easy. I have this flower shape, I have a Christmas tree, I have a bell shape, I have various shapes that I have collected over the years. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the entire dough. I try to use as little flour as possible because otherwise they get very floury, dry and doughy and you want them a little bit more buttery and flaky. And I'm going to bake them, but I don't know if I need to show that. So in the meantime, my vanilla crescent dough has chilled enough. And from that log, I'm just cutting small rounds, maybe a third of an inch wide, and then shape them into these crescents. And place them on my cookie sheet with a silicone mat. They're so easy, really simple to clean up and no waste. Here's how I shape them. Now my strollen has risen enough that I can bake it and after about 45-55 minutes here it is. And one of the specialties about strollen is that it gets drenched. Here are the vanilla crescents really quick before I'm going to set them aside and bake them. But I brush a lot of melted butter over the strollen and I guess that is from previous times when the butter, I don't know, wouldn't maybe last through the winter or they just had so much from the fall that they were able to use a whole lot on their stolen. And then we're adding the powdered sugar on top. And I told you earlier that the symbolism, I guess, is that this is baby Jesus wrapped in white cloths and the white sugar is apparently the white cloth. We're adding a lot of powdered sugar to it. The stolen itself is actually not super sweet and the sugar on top just is really yummy and nice, very nice. I hope you ever get a chance to try this out. I'm gonna move this over somewhere else. Here you can see some of my cookie shapes in the background that I've been making. I'm trying to be really efficient in my kitchen and use the oven time wisely while it's warm. Here I'm making vanilla sugar with my vanilla sugar and then I'm adding some extra powdered sugar because the vanilla sugar is pretty strong. And here are my freshly baked vanilla crescents. And one by one, I will roll them into the white sugar. And it has a very nice, pretty strong vanilla taste. So you don't only get the vanilla taste in the cookie, but actually on the outside as well. And I have my Christmas themed cookie tins. I'm organizing my vanilla crescents in the tin here. Once they have cooled off because you don't want them to be soft, here's my other tin for my regular cutout cookies. And the very next day, my stolen has completely cooled down, which is very important. I like to keep it on the parchment paper, but also wrap it tightly in aluminum foil. And if you're ever going to make it, I highly recommend you make this weeks before you want to eat it, even three weeks ahead of time, so that all the flavors have a chance to meld and um, come together. But regardless of when you eat it, it's always very delicious. Thank you so much for coming along here for my holiday baking and I'll see you in the next video.